Hi, folks. This is Mark by Mark A. Foster, Ph.D., for the Institute for Dialectical Metarealism. Zionism. Genocide. The two are basically the same. Now, there are other types of genocide besides Zionism, but Zionism is one of them. And perhaps the most devastating and destructive one in the modern world. When I talk about Zionism, I am referring to political Zionism, not to cultural Zionism. The father of political Zionism was Theodore Herzl. He wanted Jews to emigrate to Palestine and create a Jewish state. So he literally had that idea first. He literally had that idea first. Now, his idea was not born out of religious concerns. He was not a religious person. He did not even believe in God, which is the heart of being a Jew, as I understand it anyway. I mean, how can one be a Jew and not believe in God? Well, I realize that's a controversial statement. Um, because today, being a Jew can also mean a whole bunch of other things like uh, Yiddishkeit, which is Jewishness. And uh, how do one how does one define Jewishness? Well, it depends on who you ask, but basically conforming to certain Jewish cultural norms. That's Yiddishkeit or Jewishness. But certainly Herzl was not Jewish in the sense of practicing the religion of Judaism. And yet he wanted a Jewish state in Palestine. That is genocide by definition, or at least by my definition, it is genocide. Why? Because the Palestinians are the indigenous people of Palestine. And for Jews or anyone else to emigrate to an indigenous area without having the permission of the indigenous people. And Herzl nowhere said that Jews needed to first get the permission of the people of Palestine. That is genocide. Now, I don't know whether Herzl thought that through very clearly. The concept of genocide was not really clearly defined in the conscience or consciousness of the world, really not until the Jewish Holocaust, although there were other genocides and holocausts prior to the Jewish Holocaust. They did not get anywhere near the attention that the Jewish Holocaust did. Part of that was uh, mere numbers. Six million Jews were killed and millions of others, gypsies, Roman Catholics, uh, and others were killed along, along with them. And so it was not only Jews, but the preponderance of people who were killed in the German Nazi Holocaust or Jews. But the Holocaust had not happened yet. It did not occur during Theodore Herzl's lifetime. So perhaps Herzl could be excused for not knowing what genocide was, for not respecting the rights of indigenous peoples. Perhaps. Perhaps. I am not sure, but I am willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. I am willing to do that. The problem is, regardless of Herzl's intentions, regardless of what he had in his mind when he encouraged Jews to migrate to Palestine, the end result in this day is the Likud party, 
Benjamin Netanyahu and all the other right-wing political parties which are in a coalition with Likud. And right now, Netanyahu, with his party and the cooperation of those other parties, are committing genocide in Palestine, in Gaza. Gaza was formed as a result of genocide. That's why Gaza exists. There was Palestine. There was Palestine. Gaza was created because of Jews moving into Palestine and kicking the indigenous Palestinians out, killing many of them, destroying their homes, destroying a major hotel in order to have a Jewish state. Why? Well, the incentive was born anew following the Nazi Holocaust. Is that understandable? Yes, it is understandable. When six million people, people who are members of your ethnic or religious group, have just been mercilessly slaughtered, in gas chambers and ovens, then sure, it makes sense that you would think about wanting to have a place to your own. It does make sense, but not in Palestine. The Palestinians were not the perpetrators of the Nazi Holocaust. In spite of all those idiotic Israelis going into the streets and yelling, that Gazans are Nazis. They couldn't be more wrong. The Gazans are the indigenous people of that area. The Israelis are the invaders. The Israelis do not belong there. Why? Because they never sought the permission of the Palestinians, and it was their land. Now, do I believe in an ethnic or a religious state? No, I do not. I do not support that kind of separatism. The only case in which I would support separatism, although I wouldn't really call it separatism, is in cases of indigeneity. With the fourth world, if you have people who are in the fourth world who are a part of indigeneity and they are being protected, they want to retain their own religion, their own culture, then they have a right to have their own land. So the Gazans, the true Palestinians, had a right to have that land. The Amazonians along the Amazon River had a right to their land until the logging industry said, oh, we want those forests for ourselves to make a profit. And that is why, as I said before, capitalism, the capitalist world system itself, is the enemy of indigenism. And so now, now we see that happening with the Gazans. As the nation of Israel, the Zionist entity, looks for ways to expand, it is rapidly growing out of room, rapidly running out of room. It is growing too fast. It needs more land, and Gaza is right next door. So the fact that Israel gave Gaza self-government a number of years ago has apparently been forgotten. 
there is no more self-government for the Gazans. And who knows what will happen to the Palestinians on the West Bank? We will, we will have to see. I am not optimistic based upon what I see happening now in Gaza. I am not optimistic at all for the people living in the West Bank. It is a genuine tragedy. Zionism is the cause of that tragedy. And Theodore Herzl is the originator of Zionism, political Zionism. Political Zionism today and Zionism are interchangeable. If you want to talk about other types of Zionism, you need to specify it, like saying cultural Zionism. But if you just say Zionism, that is political Zionism. That is contemporary usage. And so Zionism is perhaps one of the, the most disgusting forms of nationalism, racism, ever to be invented by human beings. Was it invented by mere chance? No. It was invented because of the Holocaust. But it was still invented. And it was still promoted. And it is still being promoted under the guise of, yes, we have a right to exist. How dare they? How dare they? A few years ago, I might have said that, well, nothing is perfect. Nothing is perfect. Yes, Israel was formed illegitimately. The United Nations should not have formed the state of Israel. But what's done is done. You can't go back and rewrite the past. So let's just try to deal with the existing situation and create some sort of accommodation. Now, I was always opposed to the idea of a two-state, the so-called two-state solution. Why? Again, because I oppose separatism. And so what I favored was a one-state solution. That would not mean that you could not have Jewish neighborhoods and Palestinian neighborhoods. And so indigenism could be preserved, could be preserved, if that's what people wanted to do. That is not true in every case now. For example, in Haifa, which is one of the most tolerant cities in Israel, if it is possible to imagine a tolerant city in Israel, well, that would be Haifa. In Haifa, Palestinians, Arabs, and Jews get along reasonably well. There is no strong tension between those two ethnicities. No strong tension. They have learned to live with one another. They have learned to live alongside one another, respecting each other, living in a kind of uh, unity and diversity, which is a principle I strongly believe and assert all the time. But now, now, with all the activities that have been performed by Israel, and especially with the fact that now Israel has formally rejected the so-called two-state solution, whatever, which I, again, did not support to begin with, now, I see no reason for Israel to exist. I do not think that Israel should continue. I believe in a Palestine from the river to the sea. 
Does that mean I oppose Zionism? Yes, in principle I do, but I recognize that other people have their own views. I don't expect other people to agree with me. There may be some relatively isolated, unpopulated parts of the world. A friend of mine suggested upstate New York, parts of upstate New York, and there are other parts of the United States as well, and parts of Canada and other countries, which could be turned over to the Jews who now live in Israel. It could. Will that happen? No. It won't happen now. It will not happen now because there is a fixation on Palestine, remaining in Palestine, which did not exist prior to World War II. So I can't blame the Jews for starting Zionism, as I said. Zionism was the brainchild of Theodor Herzl. But he was unsuccessful in establishing it. What really made Zionism successful was Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler is the true father, the inadvertent true father of Israel. He made it possible for the Jews living in Middle Europe to claim that they had a right to a state. And for the first time, many other nations, including the United States, agreed with them. And so, after the formation of the United Nations, their first major act, their first major act, was the creation of Israel. If they could have known what Israel would become, I wonder sometimes whether they, they would have truly created it. Now, Israel is a first world country, as are most countries in greater West Asia. The only area of greater West Asia that is not a part of the first world is Palestine. Palestine is third world and fourth world. So that's the only part of greater West Asia that is not first world. How tragic. So again, if the UN would have predicted, which of course they could not, Bibi Netanyahu, who in the world could have imagined a monster, a non-human animal like Bibi Netanyahu, I know I couldn't. Growing up, I saw a lot of really bad leaders of Israel. Even Golda Meir, I did not like very much. But Netanyahu takes the cake. And he is literally the realization of the Holocaust. The Holocaust has come to a completion with Netanyahu. So, here is a proposal. There are really not two holocausts. There is only one. In greater West Asia, the 21st century Jewish Holocaust, I should say the 21st century Palestinian Holocaust, and the 20th century Jewish Holocaust. Really, they are a continuation of one another. The Palestinian Holocaust would not be possible 
without the Jewish Holocaust of the 20th century. So literally, Netanyahu is the fulfillment of what Nazi Germany tried to do. Nazi Germany itself practiced separatism or segregation. It put Jews into prisons, into concentration camps, and killed them. And now, since 1948, Israel has been doing the same thing with Palestinians. It is a continuity. One is a continuation of the other. One would not be possible without the other. In other words, Israel would not be possible without Nazi Germany. The, the Holocaust of the 21st century in Palestine would not be possible without Israel. So I don't think that you could really separate legitimately those two holocausts. And so in a sense, I would prefer to combine them into one, into a single holocaust. The Israelis are literally repeating the sins committed by the Third Reich. Repeating it. Repeating it. Almost to the almost on a dime. Almost on a dime. They are repeating the sins committed by Adolf Hitler. They are repeating them so precisely that I wonder sometimes, is Netanyahu aware of it? He's a smart man, a very smart man, an educated man. Surely he must know that what he is doing in Gaza and what Israel itself has done to the Palestinians since 1948 is essentially the same as what Hitler did to the Jews. I am sure he knows that. But does he care? Obviously not. Why? Because he wants Gaza. And after he gets Gaza, what will come next? The West Bank? Lebanon? Probably not Jordan, because King Hussein and Israel, especially Netanyahu, have a very good relationship. So I doubt that Israel will make any attempt to seize a part of Jordan. But the West Bank? Yeah, I can see that. I can see that very, very soon. Lebanon, again, same thing. I can see that very, very soon. So, again, Zionism is genocide. It stands for genocide. The same people who were victims of genocide became the perpetrators of genocide. It is all Zionism. It is all one episode with two parts, but a single episode. I can not really make a distinction, a clear distinction in my mind between the two of them. They are so similar to each other. And I, I've tried to figure out ways to think of them as separate events. But I can't. I can't. To me, it is one continuous genocide. In the first part, the victims were the Jews and others. In the second part, the victims are the Palestinians. But again, 
it is a continuation. It is a continuation of a single genocide, of a single Holocaust. So, sadly, Benjamin Netanyahu is fulfilling, in a sense, what Hitler started. Why? Karma. Karma. Karma, in my view, based upon the ideas of the founder of critical realism, a type of libertarian Marxism, is a type or a branch of the dialectic. Cause and effect. You cannot commit atrocities and not suffer the consequences. Look at what happened to Hitler. Look at what happened to the Third Reich. They were almost winning. They almost won World War II in Europe. They almost won, but almost is not the same as winning. You can't almost win a war. You have to win it. And Hitler and Nazi Germany lost that war. They lost it. Karma. Karma. So, in the same way, I think that the power of the dialectic, in this case, through its mechanism of karma, will inevitably bring down the nation of Israel, the Zionist entity. If it does not, then I, I suppose my entire conception of the world is wrong. And I admit that is a possibility. I am certainly not perfect, far from it. I have made many mistakes, but that's what I believe. I believe it strongly that if Zionism, if Zionism by definition is genocide, then what can we expect from this genocide than the same basic thing that happened to Nazi Germany following its genocide, the destruction of Israel. Now, I am not advocating that. I certainly would not be a part of it. I am not a violent person at all. I would never advocate that anybody commits an act of violence that is against my nature. But I think that violence is the inevitable result of injustice. And the Palestinians have been treated unjustly, just as the Jews were treated unjustly. And so pretty soon, I think, pretty soon, the time of accountability will come and Israel will be forced, will be forced to deal with its actions. We'll have to pay the price for what it has done in Palestine. So far, I think, Netanyahu thinks we can't lose. We have all these weapons. Even if the U.S. cuts us off now, because of Rafat, we still have enough of our own weapons, many of which were given to Israel by the U.S. in the past, and we still have the Iron Dome given to us by President Donald Trump, that we have nothing to fear. Well, there is no such thing as nothing to fear. That is a fantasy. There is always something to fear. The greatest kingdoms, the greatest empires, the greatest societies have been turned to dust. And that is what I predict will eventually, and I don't know when, but will eventually 
happen in Israel. And so fairly soon, I think, there will be no more Israel. There will only be a Palestine from the river to the sea. For the time being, this has been Mark by Mark A. Foster, Ph.D., for the Institute for Dialectical Metarealism. Have a pleasant day and an even better day tomorrow.